Hey everyone and welcome to Wicode. In this video I'm going to show you how to send an email with attachments using Java. So you can see right here, this is the program. Let me give you a preview of how it works. If I press the play button here, once the program has run, if I go into my email account, I can see I've received a new email saying email from Java program. And what this has is two attachments. First it also says, hello, thank you for reading my first email. This is in HTML. And then we have two attachments here. We have a PNG and then we have a PDF like this. And of course, both of these can be downloaded, but so this is what we're going to be building. And before I get started, I also want to let you know that we are using the Java Mail API to do this. I will show you how to download and set it up in this video. And I also, before I do that though, I want to also let you know that the emails that you're working with using Gmail is what we're going to be using specifically. With these emails, you have to change the security to allow um, less secure access so you can send emails to it with the program that we've made. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. So what you want to do, I'll post the link in the description but just follow what I'm doing right now. So what you want to do is go to this link here for the account you are using and then scroll down to where you can see less secure app access. And then what you want to do is turn this on. So you can, it's, it will be turned off by default, but you just have to go down here and click yes or on to turn it on. You have to do this with both the email account that you are sending the email from and also with the account that is going to receive the email. So make sure you do that with both of them. So to install the Java Mail API, what we're going to do is just going to go up to Google and type Java Mail API. And then from here, we can go to the top link here and then go to download Mail Java Mail release. And then the, the item that we're interested in is the Java Mail jar right here. So if you click on it, it should start the download. It can keep, cause harm to your computer, but we know it's valid, so just press keep. And now what I like to do is I like to put it in a specific location. So for example, what I have done is I have made is I have made a folder called Java Libraries and I've just placed it in here. So go to your downloads and place it in a, mem in a memorable location. But for now, let's go back into IntelliJ and create a new project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do File, New, Project. We're gonna, I'm going to be using JDK 8 for this. Just press Next for all the defaults and then specify a location of where you want to have this. So the first thing we should do is import our Java Mail API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder up in here. I'm going to right click here, new directory. I'm just going to name it lib. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to open and explore and then go to wherever you download the Java Mail API. I'm just going to use the one from downloads. I'm just going to copy it and paste it in this lib folder. So now we have it in here. Next thing we need to do is actually sync this with our project. And to do that, we're going to do File, Project Structure, and then go to Libraries. And we want to add a library. And the library we want to add, of course, is a Java library. And it's in our project under lib, javamail.jar. So press OK. OK. Apply. And then OK. And now we should be able to use this API within our project. So now let's just create a file that we're going to work with. I'm just going to call it my email. And let's create a main method and now we can get started. So now what we are building in this project is an email client and an email client is essentially a computer program that is used to access and manage a user's email. If you want to use an email client to send emails from your Gmail address then you would need to enter the correct Gmail SMTP settings. If you want to use an email client to send emails from your Comcast email, then you would have to enter the correct Comcast SMTP settings and so on. Some clients do this automatically when you enter in your login credentials, but if you are making a program like this, you will need to enter this info manually. Also, you may have noticed that I've used the word or acronym SMTP a lot. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and is the most commonly used protocol to send email messages. Anyway, let's get started with creating our email client. So to send an email with the Java Mail API, what we need to do first is create a mail session. And then you can use this session to create and send an email message. And this is done with the class session. And what we're going to do is just name this variable session. But instead of using the new keyword to create a session object, we use the singleton design pattern by using the method getInstance. So we do equals session dot getInstance. You should now notice that the getInstance method, that it takes two arguments an authenticator object and a properties object. When you create a mail session, you need to create a properties object that contains any properties the session needs to send and receive an email. 
If we're using Gmail, there are a few things that the session needs to actually allow us to work with Gmail. Specifically, these are the SMT SMTP authentication with your Gmail username and password, SMTP server address, Gmail SMTP port, and if TLS or SSL is required. Also, the properties object is in the form key value, where the key is the property Gmail needs to work with and value is the value. This is best seen though with an example. So to work with Gmail in this application, we need authentication. And this is done with the key mail.smtp.auth. So let's create a new properties object, just call it properties, and set that equal to new properties. And then it's a key value pair, so we're gonna do properties.put, and the key to work with, you need authentication for Gmail, and the key to work with authentication with Gmail is mail.smtp.auth. And then what we wanna do is just set that equal to true. Another property we need to specify is the server address or the SMTP host. This is the SMTP server to connect to. So we want, or we want to connect to, of course, the Gmail SMTP server. So we're going to do properties dot put mail dot SMTP dot host, and then we'll pass in SMTP dot Gmail dot com. Because the SMTP server that we are going to be working with is the Gmail SMTP server because we are using Gmail. The server address is usually in the form smtp.serveraddress.com. And for Gmail, the server address is Gmail. And the next thing we need to specify is a port number that we'll be using to communicate. And this is done with the key This is done with the key mail.smtp.port. And the port number for secure SMTP, which is required for Gmail, is 587. So we're going to do 587 like this. And now, the final two things we need to specify is the protocol and to have TLS enabled. In other words, we'll be using SMTPS, which uses TLS to be secure. And so to do this, we just use the key mail.smtp.startTLS.enable, and then we set that equal to true. And then for the protocol, it is just mail.transport.protocol, which we will set to SMTP. I believe this is a default, but I just like to set it anyway. So properties.put mail.smtp or mail.transport.protocol. And the transport protocol we're using is SM, or we're using SMTP. And now if you remember, we're doing this so that we can communicate or we're using this to set up our session. And the properties is something that the session requires, so we just put it in like this. Now, the next thing we need to pass to our session's get instance method is an authenticator object. So I press control P here, you can see authenticator. And the authentication class represents an object that knows how to obtain authentication information for a network connection. And now when we create an object from this class, we need to override the get password authentication method. So to show you that, first let's create a new, new variable of that, press OK to override the abstract method. And then this method here is called when password authentication is needed. And this authorization is needed to use our Gmail account. And so what we want to do in here is get rid of this super. We're not we're working with the super class, but we just want to return a new. You can see it returns a password authentication object. And we want to turn a new one of these where this is the email that you want to send the email from. So it'd be like you could, I'm not going to put in my information, of course, but you could do sender email at gmail.com. And then the next thing is the password, or the password to this email. And so I will just write password like this. So we should now have our session set up, and we use the session to create an email message to send. Specifically, we're going to be creating a MIME message object, or an MIME message object. MIME stands for Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension, and defines how the content of an email message and its attachments should be formatted. For example, you can have an email message that is just text, or you can have an email with HTML tags. But real quick, let's just create this object real quick. I'm gonna use the super class message as the type, and then we're gonna create a new my message like this. And then if you press control P, you can see what it takes to be sent is the current session. So it uses the, se the session to send the email. And so by default, MIME type is text dash plain. So if we wanna send an email with HTML tags, then we have to change the content. And so if you wanna just send a message with just text, you would do message.setText. That would automatically set the type to text.plain. But what we wanna do is send HTML. So what we have to do there is set content, and then we pass in the content we wanna send. For me, I'm just gonna do HTML tags. 
and let's just say email from my cool program like this. And then the second object it takes is the type. And because this is HTML, we don't want to send it as text. So what we do is we do text dash HTML. And so that will be the message type. Real quick, something we forgot to do was set the subject of the email. So let's just set the subject real quick. So message dot set subject. That's the method we use to do this. And let's just call it email from my Java program like this. And so now we have our email ready. We haven't added attachments yet, but we'll do that in a bit. So let's just add the recipient or the person we want to send the email to. And this is done using the address class, which is an abstract class that models addresses in a message. You can then use the subclass to provide the specific implementations. And the subclass we are using is the internet address class, which represents an internet email address in the form of user at host dot domain. So let's use the address class first. And set, let's call it address two, because this is who we want to send the email to. And we'll do a new internet address, which is the subclass, and then pass in the email. So it would be email at gmail, or email, let's call it email send, email that gets email. Because of course I'm not using my actual email again. And then at gmail.com, like this. And then actually just to set the, all we have to do to set the address of who we want to send it to is just set recipient and then what we want to pass in is message dot recipient type dot two because this is who we want to send it to and then we pass in the address. You can see previously that also other options we have is let's say set recipient we can do message dot recipient type dot you can do BCC so if you want to send it um, with someone tagged anonymously, you can do CC to just show you other people that are also getting this email as well. But we're not going to do that in this um, video. We're just going to keep it as who we're sending it to only. Let's also say you want to add another recipient. To do that, instead of set recipient, you would just do add recipient, and then you would do recipient type dot two, and then you would just add another address if you want to send it to multiple people. But in this email, we're, or in this video, we're just going to send it to one, of course, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, let's start working with our attachments. Say you want to send a PDF. Well, it's a very similar process of what we already done, but we have to use the multi-part class and the MIME body part class. The multi-part class is a container to hold multiple parts. One part could be the message of the email, and another part could be the attachment. To show you this better, let's create an instance of the multi-part class, and then use its method add body part to add an attachment and an email message. So I'm going to do MIME multipart, I'm just going to call it multipart equals new MIME multipart like that. And so now you can see that we can add content to this. So we'll do add body part and we can do message body part, which will be say the message, the message that we made up here. And then another thing we can add is say, let's add another thing and this could be an attachment. So we've added the text we want, then we can add attachment, we can add another attachment We'll make these in a bit, but let's just say this is how you would do it, and then attachment two, just like this. And so before we actually create our attachments and all that, what I want to first do is just import the stuff that I want to send. So I'm going to go to project, and I'm just going to click on here, and I'm going to do new, new directory. I'm just going to call it static like this. And then I'm going to put some data or some files in here that we want to send as attachments. So what you can see, the two things I've added to the static folder is just a PNG, this one right here, and then a PDF that just says subscribe to Whitcode. And so if I'm going to go back into email, and now let's start working with these. So these attachments that we have set here, they will be created, they'll be created with the MIME body part class. So we do MIME body part, and we'll just call it attachment equals new MIME body part, like this. And then we just use attachment and we use the method attach file. And then what we want to attach is a new file. And what this is going to be is static because it will be from our directory right here. We're just going to do static dash, um, one of them is whitcode.pdf. Then we're good with our first attachment. And now because we want to send an email with attachments as well, we can't just do the message.set subject up here what we have to do is create a MIME, um, another MIME body part that will be this content. So what we would do is, let's just create another one. Let's call it message body part. Set that equal to 
new mind body part. And then we'll do message body part dot set content. And let's set the content to this in here. And then of course we have to specify the content to be text dash HTML. And so the only reason I showed you this way first was because if you just want to send a regular email without attachments, you would just do it this way. But now that we want to send attachments, we don't do it like this. So let's get rid of this. And then all we have to do is set the content of our message. So then we've already created our message up here. We've set the subject. But what we did before, remember, is we set the content directly. But now we want to send this along with attachments. So we can't do, we don't do that. What we do instead is create a multi-part and a mind body part, and then add these to our multi-part. And then at the end, we set the content of the message to be this multi-part right here. And the other thing we didn't do is we didn't create other attachment. So if we want to create another attachment, we'll just do mind body part attachment two equals new mind body part. Then we'll do attachment two dot attach file, new file, and then the same thing static. And this is called untitled design.png. And then so we've attached that and we're good to go. So now all we have to do, our email is completely set up, we just have to send it. And to do this, we use the transport class, and then the static method send. So let's do transport.send, and then it just takes an argument here, which is the message and we just that we created, and we'll just do send the whole message. Now you see all this red here. All this red is because um, there are exceptions we haven't handled. The way I'm just going to deal with it in this video, without getting too in-depth, is I'm just going to do throws exception, and that should get rid of all those. Cool, and so now all we have to do is just run this and hope that it works. And if you're curious as to how I actually ran this um, program, all I would do is just right click here, and then I'd say run my email.main. But so you can see, I've already done that here. I have this pulled up just to cover like passwords to my email and everything. But then if we go back in here, you can see we have email from my Java program. Let's click on it. You can see we have email from my program. There's an H1 tag. Here's the stuff we sent along. So you can see we've subscribed to WIT code, and then we have this image right here. So this is my video on how to send an email with um, Java using the Java Mail API. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you. And I'm probably making a video on how to use JavaFX to create a GUI that can do the same stuff within here in my next one. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But besides that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.